Hi everyone, Akira here, and welcome to my top 10 Tomcats in Warriors. Last month I did She Cats, so it's time I talk about the other half of the cast. Number 10, Tiger Heart Star. To start off the list, we have Tiger Star 2, Tiger Heart Star. I just find him to be a very interesting take on dads in Warrior Cats. They found a way to make a dad that really cares for his son without necessarily making him soft. And that's interesting considering most dads in these books just ignore children. Also, I did think his super edition was nice. Number 9, Tallstar. Tallstar takes number 9 on the list because his super edition is seriously among the best. Probably the best prequel super edition. I like a flawed protagonist. I like seeing him discover himself through his revenge plan. And also, him with Jake is cute, of course. Number 8, Shadow Sight. Overall, I do enjoy each and every one of the Broken Co. protagonists so far, and Shadow Sight is no different. I really just love the conflict of him being told what to do by several voices inside and outside his head, and him just struggling to figure out who to trust. It was interesting seeing him interact with the imposter Ashfer, and it is interesting seeing him interact with Spire Sight. I can't wait to see more. Number 7, Alderheart. My opinions on Alderheart are complicated to say the least. Two years ago, I said he was my third least favorite cat because he was so darn boring. But nowadays, I just feel this warm feeling when I think of him. There are a lot of male characters who are flat out jerks, so it's nice to have a sensitive guy every once in a while. His character arc wasn't amazing, but there were a lot of cool things he did, such as caring for Twig Kit and saving Puddleshine. Number 6, Tree. Tree is weird, and you know, I like weird. It's always refreshing to have these cats with interesting stories pop up. He had my heart the moment he told us to think Bush. It's super wholesome to have a character in the books who not only has the sole purpose of preventing fighting, but is also outright unable to see the purpose and getting heated over trivial disputes. And his ghost vision was an interesting touch because it's not often we see a non-main protagonist get special powers. And I did absolutely feel for him through the isolation he faced in his novella. He's a cool cat with an interesting backstory. Number 5, Firestar. If Firestar wasn't good, there wouldn't be warrior cats in 2020. So we can start there. The only reason so many people, myself included, don't have him as their number one favorite is just that as the original protagonist, he does have some more basic qualities to him. However, I still see him as very good because he takes these basic hero qualities and makes for a very exciting good versus evil story. Both the times I read through the original six books, I thoroughly enjoyed the challenges he faced. Having a single focus protagonist works really well, and it's a shame Warriors doesn't do this sort of thing for the main series anymore. Number 4, Clear Sky. Clear Sky is the best villain. In fact, he's the only villain on this list. As important as villains are to the story, it's not often that I can really look at a villain and say, wow, this cat is so interesting and I want to learn as much as I can about them. I mean, Tigerstar and Darktail serve their purpose as well, and I wouldn't want to see the books without them, but they're just not top 10 Tomcat worthy, in my opinion. Clear Sky, however, is. Rather than just being born out of pure evil, his downfall is very prominent and calculated. You can see his pride and his protective nature slowly lead himself to be more shut off and more hostile around those with opposing viewpoints. When he does bad things, you can see exactly where he went wrong. And of course, his redemption arc was also interesting. Number 3, Greywing. I really need to read Dawn of the Clans again sometime. It really was refreshing having that whole new cast of cats, and the cherry on top was having Greywing as a protagonist. There's something oddly relaxing about having a cat who really lacks much stake in the conflict at first, only for him to slowly find in his heart what's worth fighting for. The rivalry between him and Clear Sky was great. I like how Clear Sky's moral grayness brought out some of the moral grayness that existed in Greywing as well. Also, his relationship with Turtletail was adorable. 
even though it had a sad ending. It was nice to see them. Number two, Root Spring. My feelings on Root Spring are complicated. I need to make another video on him sometime. I just feel this emotional connection with Root Spring. Partially because I can relate to his feelings of irrational embarrassment, especially when I look at my younger self. And also, he's just a cute, sensitive boy. He's like Alderheart, but more expressive with his emotions. And I do like the Root Spring Bristlefrost pairing just in the sense that the scenes there together feel so emotionally charged, if that makes sense. Like, not just love, but also fear, embarrassment, and a fierce back and forth between hope and doubt. Root Spring just feels alive to me. Alright, before I go into my number one, I have to share something that's a little embarrassing. I was halfway through editing the video when I realized Crowfeather didn't even cross my mind when I was putting together the list. I do like Crowfeather, but at this point I'm too lazy to rearrange the whole list. So let's just have him as an honorable mention, even though he'd probably rank number 7. Yeah, I just find it interesting seeing how he developed and matured over time. He caused his fair share of drama, and he really overcame being an outsider on both the quest and in Wing Clan. Everything from his role on the quest to his leaf pool relationship to his super addition was interesting. He's a cool guy. Number one, Jay Feather. I always had a fondness for Jay Feather from the very first moment I heard about him. A little blind cat with a bad attitude and incredible powers will make some people roll their eyes, and it's fine to have that opinion, but I personally just find him to be interesting. The perspective of a blind cat is unique to Jay Feather. The perspective of a cat with supernatural emotion sensitivity is also unique to him. And the perspective of a more cynical and sarcastic cat, again, you really only see it with Jay Feather. You just don't get an experience similar to Jay Feather. And that's really important when a lot of male characters do have personalities that get duplicated. Brambleclaw to Lionblaze, Alderheart to Shadow Sight. Greywing to Hawkwing and Tigerheart, but there is only one Jay Feather, and it's a good one. I enjoy a character that is intelligent and likes to investigate, makes the books more immersive, and I find his sarcasm to be good humored for the most part, especially as we find out how deeply he cares for certain cats as the books progress. Alright, that's all for this video. As always, these are just my opinions, feel free to disagree, and goodbye.